In the bottom center, we have from Team Root Gaming, it is Payam Toyam, the blue Protoss from Root Gaming. Uh, TT1, a former teammate of Greetorp, as well as a really nice guy overall. Fun fact, I put it in the bio card today. TT1 actually plays with a $300 keyboard. That's half mechanical, half... Uh, what's the what's the word term for it's like membrane keyboard? So it's like a half membrane, half mechanical keyboard, and it feels so weird, Andre. It feels like it's neither. You know, you know, like the, those shampoos that are like supposed to be uh, shampoo and, and conditioner, it's supposed to be two in one, but it's really neither. Like, it actually that, destroys your hair. Yeah, instead of <laughs> <laughs> it makes your hair worse. Uh, it dries it's, out it's, your hair, it makes it smell. It felt so bad. weird because I was like. TT1's keyboard is neither mechanical or membrane. I'm like, what is it? And uh, half the game I was playing on his keyboard while he was here, I was just wondering, what is this keyboard? I couldn't feel it, but uh, it's very interesting. In the top center, a man who's recently had to switch keyboards to Steel Series. It is Stefano from Team Evil Geniuses Raid called Stefano. Uh, everyone knows him, and whether you hate him or love him, Stefano is incredibly talented at this game. And uh, I'm very proud to say I am 1 0 against him, historically. Me too. When did you beat Stefan? I beat him ZVT. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. He played Terran, you played Zerg. You played each other's races. That's right. And that's how it's going to stay from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Never really played Stefan. 100% win, win rate against Stefan. So the only person left to beat Stefano is Kevin, right? Yeah. I'm sure Kev could beat Stefano's Terran. Void rays, bro. Yeah. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Kevin would do love doing that. In fact, uh, Dustin Bratter said he's going to relook at the Void Ray. Or not necessarily him, but Blizzard's going to relook at the Void Ray very soon in Heart of the Swarm. Maybe tweak some of the way their mechanics work, maybe the damage mechanism. I always did think that the charge juggling was really cool, and that would be like the next level Void Ray play. Uh, except then people started realizing Void Rays just were not good, other than. Maybe some special scenarios in PV, PvZ. I think they should be turned into a, the the shredders. So like they're like a unit that just sprays stuff and is used defensively. Yep. How? <laughs> like the like a laser just just does a cone damage and just hits everything. Charged. Exactly. <laughs> that would be <laughs> very boring unit to use. 100. I, I don't know. I think it'd be actually really strong against. A and lot they of should be able to in. force shield in the air. <laughs> All right, Andrew. Now you're just being silly. No. <laughs> TT1 under some slight pressure, but should be able to get away with this. It's Metropolis, a huge map. Uh, a map that people actually say that the game begins on three bases. Stefano just kind of circumventing the natural wall off and, and going about things normally. Because the map is so expansive and so big, players do like going for Phoenix play into a fast third base. Uh, and it's it's a quick stargate after you expand, and from the expand, you basically take a third base while pressuring the overlords, denying vision, lifting off stuff in the middle of the map, and you should be able to generally defend against any kind of aggression. But uh, I don't I don't know. I haven't seen Metropolis in a while since GSL did take it off their map pool, and we haven't seen too much of it at MLG. People tend to go to other maps like Caldery Malter. Yeah, that's one of the favorites. <laughs> yeah, it's. <a> <laughs> 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 oh wow! Yeah. I, mean, I think that's everybody. Everybody's here, man. Yeah. Not that NASL. love when Tabby Walter first came out. I thought it was the sickest map ever. Well, because I mean, compared to the other maps we had, it was that and like GSL was thinking about Iron Garden. And at the time, like it was Tabby Walter came around the same time as uh, Jungle Basin and Shakura's Plateau and Typhon Peak. Like, what else maps were big to play macro on? There yeah. was no such thing. I have a very famous game against Maximus Black. On Taldori Malter. Yeah? He forgated me. Did you lose? No. You won. Of course. Good. Of course. That's why it's famous. I told you he was going to forget. <laughs> I know. You're like, this guy's really cheesy. <laughs> I'm like, this guy's going to forget you, man. <laughs> I was like, are you sure? Like, he forgets you the first have game. Yeah, coach you. He knows the build. <laughs> Greetor will help Dude, you mechanically he's going to forget you. <laughs> I'm like, are I you got the build figured out. To be fair, sure? Maximus Black uh, has been practicing a lot. He streams yeah. almost every day. Jeff is a great guy and uh, very classy. He played TriMaster on the feature station, MLG, and took his defeat in Graves. Great guy. I love him to death. tt one's going to go for a four-gate pressure build, at least the way he's uh, gearing everything up. He does go for plus one, and he's getting three more gates, although he doesn't have a pile on the middle of the map. 
so I wonder where he's planning on this. Is he going to add more gateways and just continue to pressure? He may just go for an all-in on Stefano. Dan, did you know you can bet in the NASL, NASL chat? Excuse me, I still have hiccups for like 10 minutes. But did you know you can bet on the NASL chat? Yes. Well, I indie didn't. betting right now. What are the best? Do you have the best statistics, Andre? 1,600 points are on the line. And guess who's the favorite? TT1. With 90.7% of the vote? 90 points. Oh, it's point Stefano, seven. man. Why'd you say? You said TT1. It's Stefano is the favorite. I'm pretty sure that's a mistake. No. Only one person. <laughs> only one person bet max on TT1. Uh, lots of points are on the line, guys. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you may be watching NASL for the first time if you're coming off the MLG stream. If you're a subscriber, you have the option of chatting and betting on who you think will take it for points. You start off with 10 points, and from there, you continue to get points back based off odds. For example, let's say Stefano is like a 3-to-1 favorite. If you bet 10 points on TT1, you get 30 back. Very simple, right? Uh, and Stefano, obviously, you would get less points for betting. You wouldn't get a full return. We're gonna ha we compile a leaderboard. Uh, we have it on a website. People who, have, who are top in rankings are eligible for prizes, depending on uh, what we're giving out. We've given out Hardest Worn Beta Keys, and we're going to give out stuff in the future. One of the benefits right. of being a subscriber. Other than being ridiculously good looking and uh, More successful in life. very successful in life. Those are all co uh, common correlations we have with subscribers. We're not saying it's causation, but. No. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Yeah. I wouldn't be surpri surprised if it was. That's right. Gosh, I've had hiccups for this whole freaking cast. This is actually, well, this whole game. It's actually the most fr frustrating thing in the world. No worries, Andre. I, I got your back. Thanks, bro. Uh, Stefano is going to go for a fourth base. Seeing a third base from Protoss means he can get a fourth base, meaning he can tech very nicely to whatever he wants. I mean, Stefano is just making pure Zerglings and going for plus one, plus one. Uh, just getting for whatever he wants. And TT1 really can't do anything about it, although he is playing more passive. And he is cornering out more Immortals. Now, TT1 is just starting to scout Zerg for the first time. And part of the reason why is because Stefano is very famous for Roaches. But when you go for this uh, Zergling composition, you want Colossus, not Immortals. So, and I don't even think TT1 necessarily got the information he wanted either. He saw an Infestation Pit, and that's it. He saw a couple Zerglings straggle here and there, but he didn't see anything. He didn't see Double Evo Chamber. He didn't see... Like a bunch of units sitting around. So tt ones going to start transitioning to Colossus, but I, f I feel like Stefano has all the information he wants. There's a bunch of sentries hanging out in the middle of the map, Andre. Oh, he needs to force it at the bottom part. He's going to go ahead and do that, but taking massive damage. You can see the multi-pronged harass is actually just doing way too much, clearing out the top. Aye, that and the bottom will be defended, but that's a lot of sentries to be losing there. right? And he lost his immortals. Uh... That, that's just really rough on TT1. He lost a lot of units there for very cheap units. Uh, Zerglings are practically free at this stage of the game for Stefano. It only costs really Larva, but Stefano is making more Zerglings, more, uh, more Infestors, actually, and also getting up his upgrades. So from here, TT1 is forced to play more passive. When you have that big of a loss, you can't really set up any kind of timing, at least for a while. TT1 has to gather himself if he wants to go for a three-base push. He will go ahead and do that. You can see double Robo on the way out right now. Another Forge, so he is just gearing up for probably a three or four Colossus push. Stefano will be with a good composition, though. You can see his Spire is already done at this point. Hop, Hive is on the way. And as soon as he actually gets out his Corruptors, I don't see a way for, for TT1 to really do damage against this composition. Right now, Stefano... Stefano isn't really worried about any potential pushes in the near future because he cleared out all those sentries and uh, and immortals and even zealots and stalkers. <laughs> Stefano is <laughs> God dang. Stefano it. is playing this very greedy. Look at how fast he's taking the hive on such a low amount of supply and pressuring with such few units off creep. He is so bold and gregarious right now. It's just there's nothing really TT1 can do about it. He's forced to play defensive. If a sentry spoke out too far too too far out, just fungal and immediately lose his ability to, to control space. Meanwhile, TT1 doing the right thing in this scenario. When you see Ling and Fester, you need Colossus. This is a build that uh, that Kevin likes doing a lot, actually, going for double robo when you see this uh, many Lings and Festers from the Zerg. Uh, but Stefano has just so much banking up, especially since his Hive is finished. He's going to have Adrenal Glands, plus three, plus three, and his Greater Spire, and now all he has to do is wait. 
N Neil even he even has a spine crawler wall started up as well. This is this is gonna be really tough. It's the scariest thing ever right now. Like there's uh, nothing TT1 can do. No, that's I like mean, the scary thing. He the, just has to expand. The pushes aren't going to work now. When spine crawlers are already set up, that actually gives uh, a place where Colossus need to actually uh, advance onto that. Else, fungal growth will go off <laughs> on all the gateway units, etc. And you don't want everything caught. But if the Colossus are alone, you can still fungal growth that, and then just surge your corruptors forward. And with your Colossus so far at out of position, it's not going to be too advantageous for you. So I really feel like at this point TT1 can attack. He just needs to tech up to Mothership. Yeah, he's doing the right thing. He's getting his Stargate game. up. He's even getting a Warp Prism as well as Gravitic Drive. That's the right moves you need to do late game. Realize, yes, I can't necessarily push. There is no timing that I have, especially with Infestor, Spine Crawlers, and inevitably Broodlords out. Got to harass Zerg. Have to uh, force him to keep up with you because his composition slows down. Sure, Zerglings and Festers can be kind of quick, but as soon as Blue Lords come out, uh, Zerg becomes much more immobile. Utilize that to your ability uh, and, and use War Prisms around the map to control space. Now, this shouldn't actually be a real engagement. TT1 just sharking around right here. If he actually engages here, I think he's dead beca because of the composition. It's just so far... Uh, behind his opponent, even though it's relatively fast, 16 minutes into the game, and you already have a four Colossus put push. That's actually really, really scary. But this isn't a normal circumstance. I mean, Stefano has gone unharassed up to five bases at this po at this point, and uh, when you give a Zerg that much freedom, they will tech to Broodlords by 17 minutes. I mean, he's got Broodlords, and he's got, like, 16 Spines. He's got plenty of Infestors. He can start trading out his Lings for other supply as well. TT1, of course, just flirting with the idea while his War Prisms are going to two different corners of the map. Mass Zealot Warp into the right side. How is he going to also do the left side as well? T Stefano's expecting it. Uh, a couple of Zerglings are there to protect it. But the right-hand base is going to die, and that's actually really nice for him because... Uh, Stefano's gas intake is very important. He Ooh. sent these drones over. TT1 so playing out this out really nicely, actually. Uh, starting to force you a little bit weird. Uh, uh, he's trying to trap the infestors. Yeah. Does manage to catch a couple of them, but the Bullers are now attacking from one of the safest spots on the map. And these units are locked down by Fungal. TT1 losing a lot of units. Although the rematch from Stefano is going to be a lot in Zerglings. Uh, nice high ground, high, ground, high ground Fungal as well. Colossus are getting chased. And a couple of them should be dropping. TT1 trying to stop his fifth base while still harassing as well. Uh, economically, TT1 sitting in a very nice spot, almost on par with Stefan. Wow. I think TT1 actually pulled ahead in that. And now War Prism going to the third base, really forcing him back. You know, it's so good to have that Broodlord Infestor composition, but a lot of Infestors just died there. And another thing that you need with Broodlords and Infestors is actually positioning. If you don't have the positioning, it's completely useless. And right now, when TT1 is so active on the map, he's basically saying, make your Broodlords on the opposite side of the map. That makes it so much less attractive for Stefano to walk across the map and then be prone to all of this War Prism harass. That's why TT1 is doing it perfectly, getting his own bases, matching his opponent. He's actually playing this out beautifully, and now that he has his mothership coming out, I mean, yes, it is still pretty far behind, but the fact of the matter is, it takes so much for Stefano to actually say, I need to push across the map, especially with so many Zerglings. Unitab is showing 76 Zerglings. Now, you don't want that many. You want probably 20. You still want them running across the map, uh, you know, intercepting those drops. But at this point, when you have 76, that's like 25 supply that you'd rather have either Infestors or Broodlords. TT1 uh, going to go for some Archons as well to incorporate into his mix. Nice War Prism Snipe from Stefano. Has co Corruptors covering each base uh, on, the, on the exterior side. TT1, see how much he can do with uh, a Mothership that's now out onto the field. Although I'm, I'm looking for it, Andre. Oh, right here. It's in the middle of the map. He's using it offensively. Now, Metropolis is a huge map. And with huge map co comes mobility, right? Like, if you're able to traverse the map. And that's why recall can be extremely powerful. We've seen people in the past attack one side and then recall to another and, and use War Prism to pull Corruptors out of position and, and do all kinds of crazy things because you can't be on one side of the map and then the other as Zerg at this stage mm -hmm. of the game. That's right. So what TT1 is trying to do at this point is uh, 
is to kind of force his opponent to be in an uncomfortable position just so that he can actually establish map control, trying to give his war prisms a little bit more room to actually be flexible. But I love that you say that, you know, there's actually some tricks. Uh, actually, my next trick tip, uh, where you can actually place the mothership uh, on, on the void. And once you place it on the void, the closest ground is actually going to be the place where all the units get recalled to. So you can place your mothership right here, and all the units will recall over into this fifth base. That's something definitely that TT1 can do. Uh, like attack on this side and then recall. All of a sudden, you attack the fifth base, draw the mothership back, and then uh, and then recall again to keep your units alive while killing maybe a fifth and fourth and fifth base. Well, uh, TT1 for now just poking. He does have a war prism on the left side, but a nice catch again by Stefano. Stefano being very diligent with that side of uh, the yeah. map, making sure he doesn't Man, get Man, TT1 is playing this so well, Frodan, and so Mothership! Mothership, Mothership it Vortex! It does. Beautifully oh done! But he does get the Neuro Parasite off, he being Stefano, and now he's going to pull it over to his side and to try to see if he can cloak his units instead, but the big blink from TT1, Stefano's oh in trouble. Oh my god, TT1 is destroying his opponent. You can see all those infestors should have been fungling, should have been throwing infested Terrans. They get cleaned up so very fast. TT1 now reinforcing with additional stalkers from below. Is it going to be enough though, Frodan? I don't know, it's so hard to uh, tell, the but there's not a lot of Broodlords left. The Corruptors trying to work on the Mothership, and the Mothership does end up dropping. Well, interesting idea by Stefano. He just pulled the Mothership way to position, waiting for the Remax as well. The Zerglings are coming in. TT1 making Archons in the face of the Zerglings, trying to clump up all of them so the one wow. Colossus can do it. Nice. Using the AI to confuse it and able to save a lot of his units. Well done by TT1. And Stefano was not able to crush the army. Very, very impressive play. Not only did he, uh, you know, kind of trade out, which is historically bad for protest just because of the larva mechanic, but he was able to deal with that reinforcement wave, which is all Zerkling. So now Stefano doesn't really have that huge wave of larva to really remax and then put pressure on his opponent. So really well done. You can see TT1 takes the advantage from there. He has so many Archons, so many Stalkers, which aren't necessarily good, but right now... You know, momentarily, while there are no Infestors out on the map, they are empowered. They can take out those Broodlords pretty nicely. Whoa, a big bling forward from TT1. Trying to directly engage up the Zergans are doing a great job buffering. Uh, these Broodlords do have plus two armor and plus three attack. Those are very heavy hitting Broodlords, but the blink again from TT1. Oh trying my to take out God. the Broodlords. Can TT1 make magic happen? 90% of you thought that Stefano would win, but TT1 looks like he's going to be able to get into the production line of Zerg and work on some of these bases, which are invaluable to Stefano. Yeah, that's right, Frodan. And there's no investors behind here to really reinforce uh, these Broodlords. So the Broodlords are just going to be picked off so easily by just a small group of Stalkers. The Archons are enough AoE to actually deal with all the Broodlings and the Zerglings. As you can see, TT1 is clearing everything up. Only a fifth mining base for Stefano. He's on one mining base. That's it. Whereas TT1 is on two, two and a half mining bases. This is beautiful. Now going into the other Spinecrawler wall, but it's not going to be enough for Stefano. My goodness, TT1 is just surging ahead in this game. And TT1 even has another mothership out into the field. Everything is good. If he, if he ends up losing this army, which he really shouldn't, uh, he can just kind of fall back and use the mothership defensively. Stefano not trying to pump out Rojas, but he really has nothing to be able to face off against his army. Really trying to salvage things together. I mean, any kind of lesser Zerg would die by now, but Stefano <laughs> says bravo and leaves the game. Wow. Good game. Well played by TT1. Awesome job as he takes game number one. Ooh. Stefano was outplayed there, man. Yeah. Stefano had probably the best start possible. A lot of times protesters... He didn't lose drones, really. Yeah, he didn't lose drones in the beginning, didn't get pressured in the beginning, went straight up to Zergling Infester. That means your hive tech is going to be so nice not having to go roaches, roach upgrades. That actually affects you quite substantially. So he gets straight up into Infestors, kills a lot of units in the beginning phase, and then loses the game. He's on five bases, but he still is not able to really materialize that advantage. One thing, if he actually remaxed on roaches with upgrades, he would have been so far ahead going up against a Stalker Archon army. You just cannot go yeah. Stalker Archon against roaches, uh, but he went Zerglings. He didn't really have that great upgrade, though. He had only plus one on the roaches, yeah, so it would have made a problem. big difference. 
Uh, overall, though, well played by TT1. Not going to take that away from him as uh, he's up 1-0 currently over his opponent. That game was brought to you by Squarespace. Go to nsl.tv slash p slash Squarespace for a limited time special offer on everything you need to create a website. Uh, check it out while we take a break and get ready for game number two between Stefano and TT1. Will the upset happen? We'll find out right after this.